Uh, hello. Man. Work, work, work. Story of my life. So, what I figured I would do, so I've only ran this thing one time. Well, I mean, since I modified it and everything. I really need to break it in. Tomorrow, I'm going to be failing a couple pretty good-sized pines. And um, uh, I noticed when the first time I ran it, chips were getting in here through these little vent holes that I made. All right? So, Matt recommended frog skins and i had heard of frog skins before i had seen frog skins before and uh i said oh yeah oh yeah so i looked into it and frog skins are freaking expensive <laughs> so i came up with a alternative plan basically for one or two little frog skins that wouldn't have even fit my application it's like 24 dollars or something like that whenever i can buy a whole sheet of this this is outerwares let me see if i have the i thought i kept the label i guess i didn't so this right here is just outerwares and i think it's probably the same stuff that frog skin is made out of However, let's say it's not. Who cares? It's really good stuff. It's been used uh, for a very long time. Now, the big thing, well, you know what? Let's just do. The big thing is um, getting it to stick and stay. And uh, that's uh, one of Frog Skin's big claims to you know victory their stuff doesn't come off well even though i haven't tried this before i'm pretty confident that it's going to stay on because i have used the glue that i'm about to use i have used it before the glue can be purchased at an auto body shop You can probably you probably get it at like you know Ace Hardware or uh, any number of places, AutoZone stuff like that. That's gonna look cool. Uh, but it's um, literally plastic and emblem adhesive. I've had this tube. Look, this is a big tube, but still, I've had this tube. About 15 years. <laughs> now, it'll seal up on me and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, it's good. I'm going to go ahead and on the inside here, I'm going to rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper. All around the edges where I'm going to apply this stuff. Really give it something to hook on to. Cause that's the bad thing about frog skin. See, I like my shit to look pretty. You know, I'm mean, serious. Like, you can make fun of me if you want. I don't care. I like pretty stuff. I like it to look good. I like it whenever people see it, they go, whoa, that thing's badass, you know? That's cool. And uh, so, putting frog skins on from the outside, which is pretty much the way you would do it, it just doesn't look that good. I know a lot of y'all subscribe to the idea that, you know, it doesn't matter how it looks. But to me, it does. I like it when it's pretty. I think I've covered that topic well enough. Now, normally for stuff like this, operations like this, let's say operations. Oh, did I lose one of the... There it is. There's my two frog skins. Whew, I am hot and sweaty. Look at that. Can you see that? Oh, Lord have mercy. 
I think I can get both of these out of one of these little sheets. So I'm going to try that. If I can't, I can't. Who cares? Where to put my scissors? There they are. There we go. That will work. So will that. All right. Now let's see if we can bring you in here close. Uh, maybe you'll be able to see something. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Normally I would use popsicle sticks for this operation, but I don't feel like I'm going to be able to get the glue where I want it good enough. Look at this already coming out. Okay, so got a little bit of bubble around this. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm gonna try and get that off of there. Starting to rain, starting to rain. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. I don't like it when it's not perfect. It bothers me. All right, so there you go. I just did two of them. That glue really holds well. It's the glue. There we go. Maybe that. That's the glue that. Um... That glue really works well. It's the glue that factories use to put emblems on cars nowadays. Um, so it withstands heat very well. Uh, it's probably pretty resistant to fuel and oils. And um, the, the, the outer wear's material, I bet you it's the exact same thing that frog skins are. And so now we just let it dry and we're good to go. That looks pretty slick, doesn't it? That looks slick. That's going to keep all of the big stuff out and then your air filter itself will catch the fines. All right, I hope this helped out somebody out there. If you liked then hit that like button and subscribe. All right, tomorrow, guys, I will be felling two big pine trees as long as the weather's good. I'll be doing it early in the morning. And I really want to use this saw. This saw is a little bit too small. Uh, actually, is it? No. What it is is I need a 28-inch bar. Uh, and the only bar that I have that's going to work on this thing is a 24-inch bar. Yes, I could jerry up a 28-inch, but I don't want to do that. Uh, the way that this side cover is made, the way that this thing is, with it's got a bunch of holes right there and stuff. And uh, it just, what it does is the captured bar nut holes. So, let me see if you can see. It's, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's this hole and this hole. Because it's captured bar nuts, there's holes that goes through there. And, uh, and well, whenever you, whenever you mess around and make a bar work on these saws instead of the actual right pattern, oil leaks through those holes. So, And what I end up doing is running a plate like this, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, which is fine and dandy, but also because the clutch cover 
and the brake are separate units. What it means is it's pushing this out and uh, the, the, the brake mechanism and the actual brake handle are not lining up very well. I mean, it's fine, it works fine, but I'm just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'd rather run something that was made for it. So I got this here. Yeah. K095 Oregon bar. It's 28 inch, I'm sorry, it's 24 inches, which is just barely going to be able to cut down these trees. Um, but since they're pine, they have a whole lot of bark on them, you know? And so what I'll do is I'll trim the sides where I'm cutting. I'll trim all the bark off. And I should be able to make this 24 inch bar work. And if you're, if you watch this channel and you're just, and you're just dying, you're wondering, well, why don't you just use your Johnson Red 2171? I know it's got a 28 inch bar on it. Uh, why don't you just use your uh, Husqvarna 592XP? I know you got a 28 inch bar for that, and you even got a 36 inch bar for that. Why don't you just use one of those things? Well, this right here has literally become my favorite saw. I want to use it, and more importantly than that, it needs to break in. So, I don't even have two tanks of gas through this thing. I need to get to where about 10 tanks of gas through it before I run it in a whack off. So, because whenever I run this thing in a whack off, I want it to be set, ready to go. It's my favorite saw. See, you with me? So, because of that, I'm like, yeah, I got to break this thing in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do with this chain, since I know I'm going to be cutting pine tomorrow, this is that old school Oregon chain that has no gullet. You know, it's really bad. So I'm going to get in there and I'm really going to open up the gullet and try and get this chain to cut really, really well. I'll probably go ahead and also drop the rakers down to 30 thousandths because I'm cutting pine. But I don't know about that because I, I so rarely cut softwoods that I would rather just have this thing set up for oak and not, you know, just go cut pine slowly, you know? So, yeah. But anyways, I'm really looking forward to it tomorrow. I want to run this thing. Bury it in some soft, fleshy pine. Pine for pansies. Seriously. Pine cuts so easy. And it's fun because of that. It's, it is, I love cutting well, my favorite to cut would be poplar. No, no. My favorite to cut is sweet gum. Fresh sweet gum. You know why? Because it's pretty soft too, right? It's about the same as poplar. Maybe maybe it's a little bit harder than poplar. But uh, the thing is, people think that sweet gum is a hard wood. It's not. It's just the way the grain is intertwined. It makes it seem like it's hard, hard wood. But it's really not. It's it's soft and it rots so easily and fast. So, um, but sweet gum's probably my favorite to cut because I hate the tree. So it's fun to cut them down. They're so invasive and it's it's hard to stop them. And so I, I really dislike the tree. So that's enjoyable. Plus, it's good soft wood that you're you're your chain just <laughs> just cuts through it's so nice but i cut so little of that stuff that uh i don't i don't think i'll set this up with with low breakers because i know that this chain is going to cut a little bit of pine tomorrow but then for the rest of its life it's only going to cut oak so why would i 
why would I drop those rakers lower and then the next time I use this on oak, it's all grabby and stuff. So anyways, there you go. That's the video and let's make sure you get a good look at this right here. That is sweet. And that'll that'll stick good. It it will. That 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 freaking glue works, man. 3M plastic and emblem adhesive. There you go. And and what you want to look for, I got this whole sheet. So I just did two frog skin type filters, right? And look how many I could do more. Only took that much off of it really. So I got this whole thing for like nine bucks off of Amazon. Maybe maybe ten or eleven. Bam. That is nice. Let's take a picture of that. This thing's awesome. What a cool saw. Seriously. I am truly, I am so blessed to have such a cool saw. Thank you, Jane. Even though you'll never see this video, I'm certain of it. It's, I am so happy with this chainsaw. Somebody asked me, oh God, look at that. I didn't even know that. <laughs> That's what you get. Nobody's going to look at me whenever I'm like that, like this, and go, man, that guy's a lazy mother trucker. <laughs> yeah, that worked, buddy. But um, somebody asked me the other day, you know, is it worth it? I can't remember. Who were who you? I wish I could remember who it was. He asked me if it was uh, worth it just to go ahead and get the 562 over the 555. Well, in all honesty, I have never ran a 562. Um, I, I, I've never ran it. Uh, but I would say, from what I know, yes, it's worth it. Just go ahead and get the 562. Pay the extra 100 bucks or whatever it is. Get the 562. But the flip side of that is... I, Randy, my buddy... He has a 550 XP Mark II. Before that, he had a 545, a 545 Husqvarna, and which is the same thing as 550. With the, it, it's exactly, it's a mirror image. The 545 is a 50 cc version of the 555. You know, I mean, they're different saws, but and then the 550 XP is the upgraded version. And it's just like the 562 XP. So you have your more semi-pro or farm and ranch 545. And then you have the 550 XP. Well, Randy had that 545 and he loves it. I mean, he's like, he can't talk good enough about that saw. He loves it. It's the best 50cc saw I've ever used. He loves it. Um, well, finally the 545 started getting worn out. He buys a 550 this time. He does not like that 550 nearly as much as his 545. He says it doesn't have as much torque. Doesn't have it. He says it doesn't have much power. You know, um, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I do know that if I would have been able to get the with John's red, it would have been the 2260. If I would have been able to get that, I would have. I would have. However, this thing's great, and I can imagine it's only going to get better and better the more I run it. So, I, I like it a lot. And um, my guess is, because I know that the XPs are more high strung, and so my guess is that if you had a 555, with a 20 inch bar on it. You'd be able to hunker down and dog in and cut and it runs great and you like it. Whereas the 562 is more likely you have to keep it wrapped up. You know, the R RPMs. 
you have to keep the RPMs high. Zing! And, um, you know, if, if you're the type of person who likes to dog in a saw, you would probably like the 555 better. But if you're the type of person that likes to keep it zing and running and going zing, 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 and cutting all the little branches off, if you're like that kind of person, or you just like to zing and let it just eat through the wood on its own, then you'd prefer the 562. But I find that most people prefer to dog in their saw, dig it in. I know I do. So that tells me I might like this saw better, you know, the 2258. But I don't know, never ran one. We'll see. Someday I will, Barry's got one. I'll run it eventually. All right, later.